one of the most annoying thing about Swift UI, my person uh, most annoying is that we have all these updates over the years. There's a lot of deprecated code, modified new APIs for my projects. I want to have the new features, obviously, but I also want to support older versions. I did check the adaptation rate for iOS 16. This is from mixpanel.com. Over the last year, so from February 2022 to now, this is from January 2020 to January 23. So end of January. And we have now 78% iOS 16 and 17% iOS 15, which means that if you support iOS 15 and 16, you only lose 5% of the users, which is probably quite okay. This is not too bad, but in the end, I still have to support two versions. Most companies want to use the current version and two older versions. So we have to deal with 14, 15 and 16. I'm going to drop iOS 13. We all know SwiftUI was bad. <laughs> I don't want to go back. So in this project, I want to show you how you can deal with older versions in code, working with version checking, depending on if the user is running iOS 15 or 16, what features are we using. And because I don't want to mess up my code completely, which is very easy with SwiftUI and conditional code. I like to introduce to you some techniques that I found are quite helpful. So we're trying to separate all this conditional version checking a little bit to keep our main logic clean and readable. So I'm going to just use this test project and I have to set the minimum target lower. So if I go to my project targets here under general, I changed my minimum deployment target from 16.2. This is because I have Xcode 14.2 and we are going to put 14. Okay. Starting with our first example, and I'm going to use color because they introduced more system colors in iOS 15. So it's just a color example here with a color view. Don't expect two amazing examples. I'm just going to use here, let's say we, I am using here cyan, the frame, because otherwise this is going to be very big, width of 100 and a height of 100. And we want to use that in our main content view. Now you see here, there's an error coming up at Xcode because it won't let me use it since I am, I set everything to IS 14. If you want to check when something is available, also more general, you can either use jump to definition. So this is showing me that cyan was declared in an extension to color. This extension was available for iOS 13, macOS 10.15 and so on. And the, some of these colors were directly available like red, orange, and yellow and green. Cyan was only later introduced for iOS 15 and macOS 12. These at available are attributes that you can either add to property or a class or a struct. So that's why here you see this at available. The other option is if you option click here, open in developer documentation, the helper page and up here in this bubble, so we get the information often it's available. So this tells me iOS 15 plus or so iOS 15 and higher, macOS, Mac Catalyst, TVOS and watchOS. Also interesting if you want to have a cross-platform app between iOS and macOS, then you will sell them sometimes only for one of them. So the good thing about the documentation is for some of them where they replaced things like the accent color and Swift UI, I actually have to use the view modifier. So here you get a nice red running deprecated and with this important information that we have to replace this with tint. This is another example we are going to look at later. Okay. So how do I deal with my Xcode still keeping my error? What can I do? And when you open the help, you have three different options. If I use the first one, this if hashtag available, this means you can do now a version check in code. So saying if 
iOS 15 is available, do this. And if it's not, if it's lower, then do something else. That is the first option. And nicely now wraps my code here and I have here a fallback for earlier versions. So let's say for earlier versions, I use blue. Now in the canvas and the preview, you will always use the newest simulator. So I will always have information for iOS 16.2 right now. If you want to test this, you need to run it. You actually have to build and run for iOS 14 then. The one thing that it doesn't get right sometimes with this if hashtag is that it adds maybe the if clause too wide or too narrow and around the vicinity where you have a problem. For example, my frame, I actually don't want to just have it if because also for the lower versions for blue, I also want to have this frame. And because I want to add a view modifier to a conditional, I wrap it in a group. So I add here a group and then I have to find the end of the group and apply it there. So now both of these colors get these view modifiers. The advantage of this solution is that I have dealt in this view with the version checking so that whenever I call color view, it already handles. So if I use here color view, it won't complain anymore. So I dealt with it once and now I can use this view anywhere. There's another option. Maybe I just go create another view, second view. So again, I use color dot cyan, get our problem again. And now we try to use the add available attribute to enclosing property. And the last one to enclosing struct. You see here we have a cyan, this color is in the body, which is a property. So do we want to add add available to the body or to the struct? The second option is enclosing property. So now it adds it to the body which means that for iOS 14, we suddenly don't have a body property, which means my view doesn't have anything to show. <laughs> so this is not a good way of doing this. And I'm just going to revert this. So just when, uh, when Xcode suggests you this, just ignore the second one with enclosing property, if it's the body, but we can use the enclosing struct. So now we are saying, I uh, don't use the whole second view, not in iOS 14 which means that my preview is now also complaining every time I use this view, I'm just, I just pass the problem further up <laughs> to my other views. So now the preview says, I don't know what to do with this. So again, in this case, I'm just for the previews, it's fine to say I'm at available because as I said, the preview only shows you the newest version anyway. So you might as well just use the same available attribute in front of the preview too. Maybe just also add the frame. So the thing is with this second color, second view, if I would want to use this in my content view here, I would have second view. I again have a problem. So in order to fix this, I have to here again do this version check. As I said, if you do this to the views, you have to propagate your problem just propagates to other views where you want to use this. I usually prefer to handle the conditionals in some of the sub views. So of these two options, I probably prefer to handle these conditional as soon as possible. As you see, the difference between if hashtag available is that it, I handle the conditional, I can say what else I want to use. This is basically the handling of availability and the add availability means attribute is I am declaring this it is available or not. You can also use if unavailable, that is also possible. So they added for SwiftUI 5.6, you can also write here hashtag if unavailable. Now in this specific case with the colors, I like to use colors quite a lot. I actually don't want to have here this color view because I want to use color as a color and I rather write here another color dot my own color because that I can use with a foreground color and fill colors. I want to use foreground color and tint and stuff with this and I can't use with this solution. So I'm just going to create a new view. Reusable color example view. I want to create a thing that is like Swift UI implementation. I want to stick as close as possible to the Swift UI implementation. And I just want to replicate this and give it my own. The strategy that I'm going for is I look what SwiftUI is doing. So I jump to the definition of this color. Again, if we see I, ah, it's an extension to color. 
an aesthetic property. So let's maybe also create our own aesthetic property. So extension to color. And now here, I want to create a static let. I need to name this somehow. I don't, I cannot name this cyan again. I need to, but I want to know, I want to remind myself that this is cyan. So I named this the VI for version independent. You can also find another operation. Or you can name this custom cyan. This is in color. And I am computing this here. So in here, I'm going to do the version check in here. So this is if hashtag available iOS 15 else. And now I can say color blue and the for iOS 14 and color dot cyan returning this. And then here for this color, I can now use version VA. VI. So we have this color again, can use here this frame. And additionally, now because I made this as an extension to, I made this a color, you can use my color as a foreground color. And now it comes up as my own color. So it's nice integrated. It's very swift UI like, which means that in the future I can work with this easily. I don't have to rethink too much. It's not that I don't want to think. It's just not about this kind of things. The other thing that you might want to do is using this for fill. And now if I want to use here color, in this case, if I want to fill this, I can say color my color. If you okay, try again, use here just the, so in this case, you were saying fill expects a type of shapes. And because I only use dot, it's the, it guesses the type and it's trying to use shape style. Whereas in the other case, I explicitly say use color, which conforms to shape style. So if you want to also get rid of making this shorter here, because maybe in the future you get confused why you can't use it like this. We can add it again, check how this is defined. So let's go look for a red, jump to definition. So again, we are in a extension to shape style where self is color because shape style is a protocol, not a class or struct. So let's just copy this. So. I write as version independent and cyan color. And I use here because I already added this color. So I might as well reference the same color. And now I can write here circle fill dot vi cyan. As you see, I made my own color just so I can deal with this available checking once. And I can use the same color everywhere. As the second example, I want to talk about view modifiers because especially with view modifiers can be tricky to handle this conditional version checking. In this case, I try to use presentation details, which is only available for iOS 16. And this I have to use in a sheet or on a popover. So if you are on iOS on a small screen and you don't want to, usually it shows the sheet in the full screen. And a lot of times this is too big. So now you can say, I want, I actually want to sheet only be half size or maybe a certain fraction. Okay. How do I deal with view modifiers? So we already know that at available attribute will make this whole view unavailable for higher versions that I don't want. I just want to not use the presentation details, which means that I have to use here if hashtag available. Now my iOS 16 version has sheet view and presentation details. And in the fallback version, I use the sheet itself. The preview, remember, this is running on the newest, so I will see the sheet. So this is 50% or this is medium. And then I added here 85% so you can now move it up and then close it. In this case, I just added a couple of colors to put something in there. And you see actually for the medium size, it does fit, which is nice. Then I see what's below also. I can deal with this version here locally. But I'm probably going to use presentation details a lot. And I don't want to always have this if hashtag available. I also add quite a few more lines <laughs> to my code. And conditional code is never good to read. It makes it always harder. So how do I create a view modifier? Because I want to 
I always make a Swift UI thing out of it <laughs> that handles the conditional, which in this case is Swift UI view modifier, so we have to make a view modifier. So let's create a new file because this one is already too big. Swift UI view. So I am. Um, because it's a view modifier, it's an extension to view, so depending on how you want to name this, I probably just name it here version independent presentation detent. But let's have a look at how this presentation detent thing is actually declared. It is an extension to view as a normal view modifier. And I can just copy. So we have to write something similar here an extension to view. So I'm not using a package or anything, so I can remove the public. If view modifiers, you can return self and then additional modifications. Now, the one problem here is that presentation D10, this type is not available for iOS lower. So I'm going to remove this for now and we just do the simpler version. Now here I can add my presentation details and add something like medium and medium large custom type fraction or height. So then you can say 300 points or here fractions of what I had 1.85. Just waiting for the error to come. Yes. And I am not making this available because that was the whole, I want to get rid of that. So I use if hashtag available and in the fallback, I use self. I need to return self return self. Okay. I can now use this here. So I can remove the conditional handling and use my presentation details. I didn't rename this. Although already a quite an improvement, I probably don't want to use always the same values. But I need to somehow handle here this new type. The thing is uh, handling in the initial in the arguments or initializers with new types, you can't do that. But there's a trick to use a wrapper type. So this is a struct version independent presentation details. And I'm basically just want to, because it's a wrapper, I want to mimic what the other one, what the new one does. And you already saw here, it is actually um, a struct with this, but we might as well use an enum where I can use this. I'm not going to use the custom type. That's getting a little bit ahead. Let's just stick with medium, large fraction and height. And I probably just going to be fine with an enum for the wrapper. Oh, I need an enum case medium, case large, case fraction with an input argument of CG float because I still need to pass this down in case height in points also passing into CG float because it's my own type. I can now use this here as the argument. Just going to use the same styling here, but instead of presentation, I use version independent presentation details. Does not conform to hashable. No problem. Enums can be easily hashable. And I need to, I probably should rename this now, this view modifier version independent presentation. Okay. Now I have here my own details that I can pass down and I have the one that Swift your iOS 16 expects that presentation details expect. So I need to convert them and I'm simply creating to this struct, to this enum, I'm adding here convenience function to generate details. So this is then returning me the new type and I use a switch self and say return medium, return large, return fraction with probably should rename this here to number a number. So I just pass the same values and height with this number. Now it's complaining that presentation details is only available for 16. That's okay. And in this case, we're actually using one of the helps with add available. So I can make the enclosing enum at available, but I need to use this, the wrapper. I need to handle this all the time, but this function I only need for the newer iOS. 
So I can make the enclosing instance method function add available. So now only this function is available for higher. Going back to my view modifier. So if I'm in the case of iOS 16, I can now use the details, the wrapper details and create the new ones. So I use the old ones and use a map dollar zero where I can call here my details function. So this is now the new thing. I use this function here, which is only available for iOS 16, but it's fine because I'm already, I already checked. I'm in iOS 16, so it's, Xcode doesn't complain. Now I have this new details and I can use them here instead of the fixed values. This doesn't match from the types because I have an array and I need a set. So I use here from array. Okay, this is it. And we can actually use now this new view modifier. Going back here to my example, and I can say here version independent presentation details. It gives me now my type, but I can now use the same style. I mean, you the only reason why you see a difference is here because it says VI instead of presentation details. So I can use medium and fraction of 0 0.85. So it looks pretty much the same as it was before, where I had. Like this, I mean, like this. There is a teeny tiny difference from the use. Just need to remember that this is version independent presentation details, but the implementation is the same. I don't need to relearn anything. The nice thing also in the future, when I drop iOS 15 and lower, sometime in the future, I can simply remove all, I can remove this view modifier. And then wherever I use this, I replace it with the old name. So I don't need to change a lot when I remove all this clutter. From the implementation, this looks probably a little bit complicated, but I found the strategy works pretty well. Writing your own view modifiers, looking at how SwiftUI is natively implemented, copying the declaration, then handling the conditional, the available checking, and if you need to, if you have to handle arguments that are newer, types that are newer, using here a wrapper. This is actually a good use case where you also see that we ourselves use here an available attribute. You can just follow this example you can just use in your own and also use it as a recipe. Let's now have a look at a deprecated API. And I'm here using X in color. This is a color that is then used for the control views. Per default, it is blue. And now I set here purple, so it changes the button color and also for the slider. Now, from the developer documentation, we know we have to replace this with tint. There's quite a few cases where you have an old API that is replaced by a new one. So I have this one view modifier that I want to replace with tint. So again, I want to write a view modifier. I jump to definition. So this is the style of view modifiers, and this is an extension to view. So extension view, I name this version ex independent accent color. You can also name it version independent tint color. It's probably better to name it tint color just because then in the future I remember easier. So here I can say return self dot tint, this accent color. I use again the version check because I want to handle this here. And in the fallback, I use self dot accent color with this accent color. And now I can use version independent accent color. Doesn't change. So especially for you modifier, it's worth it because otherwise I need to extract this as a property or struct. I have then the if statement around everything. It's just not nice. I like to keep as little as possible. Okay, the last big example for what you do when something is updated is the navigation API. And although I'm very much appreciating the updates, if you have to support a project and you have to include both of these navigation APIs with navigation view, the old one, and navigation stack, it's not so much fun, especially if you want to do programmatic navigation. Let's start with the simple example. Okay, I have a old navigation view with a emoji list view. I have here just a array of emoji strings that I show in a list. 
with a navigation link. This is navigation link destination. You can still use that one because also the navigation links are changed. I go to the detail and this is how I'm only showing here the emoji in the large font. So that together when you tap here, you can go to the detail. It's pretty simple. <laughs> so how do I update this now to the navigation stack? I cannot use navigation view. I need to use navigation stack. So navigation stack, because this is a view. I use here the if available check and the old one is navigation view where I also show the same emoji list view. Now in this case, I'm not going to make this reusable unless you have multiple of this navigation stack in your project, because if I only use this once, then I don't really see the point in making this reusable. You can also make this reusable, but since there is more complicated input arguments, I'm probably not doing this for now. Okay. The good thing is in this case, I don't have too much good repetition because I already extracted the whole content of the navigation into this emoji list view. And I also there added the navigation title. So everything that both of them have go in this view. This works fine, as you see. And the main reason is that navigation link with destination is still valid. Just go jump to definition. So this one did not deprecate. Some of the older ones like here. Okay, this is a lot. The navigation link with is active binding destination. This one I use for programmatic navigation because then if you add here a state property and you can programmatically change the state property, the navigation changes. There's a lot of available attributes in front of this. And in this case, you also see here deprecated 16.0. And we are supposed to use navigation link with value inside the navigation stack or navigation split view instead. So I just added this so many times because for each of these platforms, macOS, tvOS, watchOS, it added this. So here we are for the new one supposed to use navigation link with value and label. So the value is the emoji and the label is just the text. I think there's also another one that I did not use. So now this is not available. I use again the if hashtag available and the fallback to earlier versions is this one. Now you only need to do this if you want to do programmatic stuff. If you have a simple navigation, you can just stick with the navigation link destination. Okay, going to navigation example. Now my navigation stack will not work because I didn't define a destination. So in here, in the stack i use a navigation destination for a string because i use the strings for these emojis dot self emoji detail view with this emoji so this is again working but now i didn't do any programmatic navigation and we are going to do this now if you don't know how state driven navigation works i would suggest you watch one of my earlier videos where i talk about navigation api how to programmatically do this, how to think more in state. And then there I introduced, a, because I need to hold the state somewhere and I want to manipulate it quite often. I need to hook up things. I want to pass down all this property this whole time. So I create an environment object, a state object, a view model that holds of them. And I pass this in the environment. So I named this navigation state manager. I have here two properties, path and is detail shown. These are the two state properties that in one hand, this path I need for navigation state stack. So let's just create this here and hook it up state at state object because I have a view model of our manager and this is a navigation state manager. So the stack, if you want to do programmatic navigation, has a path property with a binding navigation path. This is just a type erasing collection. So in this case, I use the manager's path. I already know that I'm only having here strings, so I can use a concrete type. Now I hold the state for the navigation stack in order to get the state for the navigation view. 
I actually need to go in here because navigation link, as I showed you, link is active. I want to use this one. So this is emoji. And this binding is active for not is the state that, that I want to manipulate programmatically navigation. And again, I use here the state manager. I'm going to use the environment object var, which I have to actually use manager navigation state manager. I have to put this here in the environment navigation state manager. And in this case, I am using this is detail shown with the same detail. And this needs to be in front, the dollar needs to be in front of the manager. This is a binding. Okay, now I have the manager set up here. Because I had I said in the environment, I need to place this manager in all the environments for both of them. Because in the if state, I use a group around this. If an environment object of manager. So now still working and I actually want to add the one button. So this is a short button declaration where I again access my state manager. And when I click here, I call this go back to root. This is then manipulating the state. And in one case, I'm setting the path back to empty. In the other one, I set is detail to false. Now I manipulate both states, but SwiftUI is anyway smart enough to not do a few updates if one of them didn't change. And I'm just going to use an overlay where I add this button down here. The frame is on simply to move it down to the edge. So now if you're here, you can say go back. This is for the navigation stack. The preview works with the new ones. So in order to test this for, for iOS 15, I need to run this project. So my main app, I use now navigation view and I select a simulator with iOS 15 or 14. So I can still select something. And then when I'm in the detail, I can say go back and we are pushing back to the root. So this programmatic navigation works, the navigation, the normal one, the programmatic works for both the lower and higher versions. Now I know what you're going to say. This is super easy, simple example. Yes, I know. I do struggle with this one to make it look good. One way of isolating logic is to, if you create here more bigger ones, is to move this one in a separate file for the newer and the older version to unify the states. Depends a little bit. But in one case, I always have to work with an array and the other one is either a bool or an optional value for this navigation link. Here is either is active or items. Then you need to manipulate the items and this is just not what I want to do. The problem is from the node API I'm going to drag around for the new one. Also here creating views that are reusable so that I don't have to always deal with this code, with these conditionals. It's because of the state handling, the, the linking here, that this might be a little bit tricky. So I would probably just stick with the normal. In this case, as an exception, I would just use the if, hashtag if, and deal with it in code, and then make maybe smaller views. That in some cases in the future is when I drop this is 15, I can just remove the whole view and clean up my project better because we also need to think of future proving this project. <laughs> In the future, for each update, I need to drop some of my old code. I need to clean it up and I need to add more complex stuff for the new features. So I don't want to mix up everything. It's probably also a good idea to keep here marks or keep track of what you want to remove in future when you drop a version. Smaller views. I also did something similar with text fields because text fields changed from commit to on submit to create new sub views, custom views or these view modifiers, it usually works for smaller views, just not with navigation API <laughs> changes because these APIs are by themselves already complex. And if I want to hear mixed stuff, it's getting even worse. For now, if you're supporting iOS 15 or lower, it's best just to stick with the navigation view. Unless you're very ambitious and want to have obviously the better experience for the user, then you can mix these. But it's probably better just to have the project with either one of them. Otherwise you introduce more bugs than good stuff. Let me know down in the comments if you also struggle with making your projects compatible with different versions and what you struggle the most with. Maybe some other strategy that you found works very well. 
And maybe if I could convince you to drop to an earlier version, because you found out it's not as much work and it's not as complicated as you thought with some of my stuff, let me know. I hope I made working with different versions for you easier. Until next time, happy coding!